Hello guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video on the Blue ZX. Well today guys we are going to be refitting the brake master cylinder and brake fluid reservoir. We are also going to be doing brand new brake pads and putting the calipers back on at the front. I have however already done the driver's side front one because when I show you how to do one side it's the same for both sides. And then we're going to go down the route of uh, bleeding the whole system up. So um, wish me luck, we'll get this done now. So guys, we're gonna put the um, brake master cylinder on with the uh, brake reservoir. So that's gotta go into this area just here, tuck them out of the way. We have got a plug lead to go into, plug into that sensor, that's a low fluid level and we've got minimum maximum, we'll put fluid in there when we've uh, finished. So let's give you a little bit of a zoom in and we'll get started on doing this. So literally there is a hole in the centre of this, like so, that goes into onto a pin that's there, just carefully line that up. Just like so, we've got a couple of 13mm nuts to go on either one either side. So we've now got this all bolted in with a 13mm nut at each side. We've got the two brake lines bolted in with a 11mm spanner used to put them in. And we've got the um, cable in for the uh, brake fluid warning light, which is effectively the handbrake light on the dashboard. Same light used to illuminate for then the handbrake's on as what it is to let you know when the fluid is low on the brake fluid. So now we're going to move around to the side and put the brake caliper on. So we've got to put this brake caliper on to this brake line and then it'll go in these two points here. First of all, we've got to wind the um, caliper back. And also, just before the um, car did go off the road, I will say I was due to do a brake pads change on the front anyway, before um, I took it off the road through the hydro-locked engine. Because if you look at the brake material there, you will see the there isn't anything left really so obviously it was due a break there, that, that's one of the old brake pads and I'm going to be putting two nice new ones on um, so it was due a brake change anyway but as I'm doing the rest of the work because of what happened I was literally due to do the brake change before so the calipers now wound back I used the plate from my brake wind back tool and a G clamp purely and simply because the um, caliper wind back tool wouldn't quite fit in there and as you can see that is now completely wound back the plan now is literally just to wind it on to here first once we've got it on as far as we can we literally just Fourteen mil spanner, nice and tight. So now we've got two bolts to go through, and yes, I know I haven't put the brake pads in just yet. That's all nice and tight. So that's all done up and moving freely, look. And we've got these brake pads. They go that way in, I believe. Let's just double check. 
this is just a test fit no you don't they go that way in because the reason I say that is because that pad there won't go in that side because of the shape of the caliper actually stops it from going in there's a little bit in there making it designed that it doesn't go in so I like to put this one in first let's get some copper grease uh, just put some on the ears because they're moving put some on there and all over the back so it goes up against the piston and freely moves against the piston so that's that one that can now go into there nicely like so push that across then we'll do the same with this but as like I said if you look carefully this has got a bit of a cut out of funny shape these points effectively on here go to the top put some copper grease on there do some plenty on that bit there and that's that we're not done yet though because we have a couple of springs and a bar to go in the top so I just thought I'd bring you in for the final showing of this. Basically the clips go around the bottom here and allow it to be sprung onto that bit. The, the bar goes across there to lock it off in the last bit whatsoever. This is all now nice and loose. This all now moves nice and freely and the other side is all nice and loose as well. So that will close up the gap there and firm it up when I actually do the bleed of the brakes. But unfortunately I'm not going to do the bleed of the brakes in this video and I'll tell you why in a moment. So I'm pretty much going to end this video here, but as I, as promised, I will tell you why I'm not going to bleed the brakes in this video. One is because it's going to be the same sort of principle to bleed these brakes as it would to bleed any brakes on any car that's got an empty system. There's a lot of videos out on YouTube on how to bleed brakes as a general aspect. Um, and um, the other reason is I am uh, kind of fighting against the weather today. It, I reckon I've got about five minutes literally left of uh, time as before it absolutely chucks it down with the thunderstorms that we're having at the that we're set to have it very shortly. Um, and also I'm probably going to need to do probably about another hour's worth of recording uh, by the time I get the angles set up and all that and it just takes um, so I've decided I'm not going to show you how to bleed the brakes it will be just obviously what's in this footage so far so um, I'm going to say thank you for watching hope you enjoyed uh, what I was getting up to and I'll say bye for now just before I do go there'll be another one of my amazing videos in this top corner just up here and my um, subscribe icon please do consider subscribing if you're not already will be down in this bottom corner just here take care guys stay safe bye for now